In this video, we're going to look at what I call generative components. And the idea behind that is I make one component, which we can see in the lower left hand corner of the screen here. And I'll hide the bounding box so that we can see that a little better. So that is a shade, a triangular shade. And there's a slider here in Grasshopper that controls how high, or in this case, how open the shade is. So you see the component in the lower left raising and lowering as I move the number slider. And then you see a populated surface here on the right reacting. So the idea is I create one external 3D component and then I can populate a surface with it. And this just happens to be a plane, but it could be a complex roof, complex facade of a tower, whatever the case may be. So that's what we're going to explore in this tutorial. So I'll open a new grasshopper definition. So the first thing that we have to do is we have to model this component that you saw in the lower left, this triangular shade. And I'm going to do that using external data just so we can begin to learn how to do that. Bringing any type of external data into Grasshopper. So I'm going to go ahead and open up WordPad. kind of my simplest place to have data. This data could come from Excel as well. So I'm going to create three points to make up my triangular shade. So 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 20, 20 feet, but I don't need the feet, 0. All my Z heights will be 0 because that needs to be controlled through the grasshopper definition and then 20 in the X, 20 in the Y, and 0 Z height. So this is the data that I'm going to import into Grasshopper. So I need to save this as a text format, not a rich text format. I'll save that. It warns me that I'm going to save this as a text-only format. That's fine. I can close that for now. So I need two components to import that data, which is going to come in as a list, into Grasshopper. The first one that I need is a file path. And I can right-click on that component and choose Set One File Path and browse for my text document and just so we see what we have here I'm bringing down a, a notepad here okay so all this is is the path so for people in older versions of grasshopper you don't need this component you can just use a panel and copy and paste the path to that text file. That's all that is. All this is doing is telling Grasshopper where to look for a file. We need to be able to read that file. So I'm going to double click and start to type in read. And there we have a read file component. And I'm going to plug my path into the P input. Copy and paste this panel. Okay, so now I have your standard grasshopper list list of three points so I'm going to use a point component okay I'm going to plug that into my point component and now you see those three points show up in grasshopper and what I want to do is I want to move points zero and two. I want to raise them or be able to raise them in the Z direction. So I'm going to do that by calling out my three points using list items. So that's what I'll do first. 
so I'll bring out my list item and plug my list of points into it I need a number slider and I'm gonna double click on that and set it to n for integers I'll make the max I'll make it 300 okay so that's my zero point I'll copy and paste this list item and number slider two more times okay the second one will be point one this third one will be point two okay and if I click on list item they'll highlight here so that's point two point one point zero so I'm gonna raise zero and two and I'm going to do that with a move in the Z direction and a move is also a copy and I need my Z direction okay and I'm gonna need one of these for point zero and point two and I need two of these because I'm going to be drawing a polyline through these points okay so point zero I'm going to need to move and point two I'm going to need to move and then the key slider in this whole definition is going to be the one that controls the Z height which will be plugged into here so I'm gonna copy and paste one of these number sliders and place this special one up here and I'm gonna double click on slider and I'm gonna call this lift off so I'll plug that into both moves and now as I as I r increase that slider amount you see those points moving up and down so I want to draw a polyline from or through these three points okay so I'm gonna double click start to type in polyline and I can plug each one of these in using the shift key And if we look in Rhino, I need to close that triangle, close that shape. So I right click on the input C for polyline and I choose set boolean true. And now I have in Rhino a closed triangle. And I'm going to take that and just turn it into a planar surface. So I'll double click, start to type in planar. SRF, choose planar surface, and plug that polyline in. So that's my 3D component. And I'm going to go ahead and right click on the body of that component and just rename this and call this shade. I'm going to bring down a scribble and so this is my shade component just so when I come back to this definition I know where everything is change the size of that okay so that's my shade component so I'm gonna start a new line down here which is going to be the plane surface that I populate with this shade component okay so I'm gonna start this new line of definition and I'll start it off by double clicking and typing in plane and I'm gonna use a plane surface and you see that show up there at zero 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 the X and Y are gonna be used to control its 
length and width. So I'm going to copy and paste one of these sliders and plug one into the X, copy and paste that, plug it into the Y. Um, since I'm teaching this at IIT, I'm going to make this about the size of Crown Hall, which is Crown Hall is actually 240 by 120, but just to keep it simple, I'll, I'll make this 200 by 100. Okay, so now I have this, if I zoom out in Rhino, I have this rectangular plane that I will populate. Now, I want to move it in the X direction. I want to move it to the right, away from my shade component. So I'm going to double click and start to type in X, Y, Z, and I'm going to choose point X, Y, Z. And this will be the origin, the lower left-hand corner of that plane. And I'll just use a number slider to control that. And you'll get a better sense of what that's doing in a second. Okay, I move that slider and it just moves over in the X direction. Just no magic here, just gonna move it over 60 feet. Okay, so now I have my surface that I want to populate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide that surface into 10 foot squares, let's say. So I need two components for a divided surface. I need a divide domain squared, which creates a two dimensional grid, and that's gonna be 10 feet by 10 feet. And then I need to make subsurfaces out of that two dimensional grid by using an ISO trim. So I'll plug my divide into my subsurface, and both of these components need the surface that they're going to subdivide, which is that plane. Okay. So I'm going to, just for ease on the eyes, I'm going to turn off the plane. Okay, so we get a better look at this. And if I divide it in the U direction, which is the X, if I divide it 20 times, I'll copy and paste this X slider, and I'm going to take that down to 20, because it's 200 feet in the X, divided by 20, so those are there's going to be 10. And since it's only 100 feet vertically, I'll copy and paste this and set it to 10. So then I'll have 10 feet by 10 foot squares. Okay, this is the definition for a divided surface. So let's label that. We'll make the size 40. Okay, the next part of our definition is going to take this shade and populate this surface. And that actually happens by morphing in Grasshopper. So let's take a look at how to do that. So we need a couple of box components. And there's three different ones in Grasshopper. The first one if I double click is called a bounding box and that bounding box is going to go over this shade component so I'm going to need to plug that shade component in to this C input so since they've gotten rid of the receiver component in Grasshopper we have to do this a little differently so I've moved up to my shade component here in the definition and from this primitive panel, I'm going to choose a generic data component. And I'm going to plug my shade into it. And I'll right click on this and I'm going to rename this shade component. And what I can do is I can 
right click on the shade component and for wire display I can set that to none or or hidden I just had to move that out of the way so wire display hidden display and when I deselect the shade component it disappears so that's now a receiver that I can move down here and plug that into my bounding box okay so our first box and you see that show up over here on that component now what I need is I need a bunch of bounding boxes on each one of these surfaces so I'll do that with a surface box okay and the surface box has two inputs it has a D for domain which is right here it has an S for the surface which is that component so I'm going to plug that into the D that into the S and that populates that with a bunch of boxes and we'll be using the height from our liftoff slider so I'm going to go ahead and just bring that slider down to where it's most useful so that's this one okay liftoff so we can start to see that and I'm going to plug that into the height of the box. So you see now that that's it's controlling the height of the bounding box as well as the boxes on the divided surface. So that's the whole that's the key to this definition. So how do we move our shade component to the divided surface? Well, we do that with our third box component, which is called a morph box. So I'm going to double click and start to type in morph and there it is box morph and three inputs one is the geometry that we want to morph which is our shade component the R is the reference box which is our bounding box and the target where do we want to morph this onto is all of our surface boxes and it's there I'm gonna hide a couple components so that we can see it better I'm gonna hide that surface box and I can hide my original plane and my subsurface okay so And now if I change the slider amount, it opens and closes. You'll get an error if you zero. So that's it.